It is very common for a company to buy another company for many reasons. This is the nature of the business world. However, this is not common in highly advanced industries like the space industry because this is one of the most expensive and complex businesses out there. But here we are witnessing a huge multi-billion space company being sold. And in this video, we are going to talk about who is going to buy this company and how this will change the space industry forever. Before we delve any deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about space news and many more. What surprises me most about the space industry is its unpredictability. Only a decade ago, the United Launch Alliance was one of the most dominant players in the industry, with a reputation for its reliability. Back then, SpaceX was still in its early stages and was not nearly as successful as it is today. But fast forward to the present, and the situation is quite the opposite. ULA had some big wins under its belt. They were the go-to for launching national security payloads, earning trust from the government. Their Delta and Atlas rockets were known for their precision and efficiency. SpaceX and others looked up to ULA as a model of success. Musk himself respected their achievements and the standards they set. But as SpaceX gained ground with its Falcon rockets, ULA faced a new challenge. The rocket launching market became very competitive with the arrival of newcomers like SpaceX and Blue Origin, each introducing fresh ideas and innovative approaches. SpaceX especially shook up the industry by successfully developing reusable rockets around 2010, challenging the traditional model of one-time use rockets. SpaceX's breakthrough with reusable rockets changed the game, making space launches more affordable and frequent. This put pressure on established players like United Launch Alliance and government organizations like NASA to adapt or risk falling behind in the rapidly changing landscape. For United Launch Alliance, adapting meant investing in new technologies like the Vulcan rocket to stay competitive against SpaceX and others. NASA also had to partner with private companies for initiatives like the Commercial Crew Program to develop crewed space transportation systems. This is where the United Launch Alliance and NASA lost against the newcomers in the space industry. Let's take a closer look at ULA's most advanced rocket, the Vulcan, and compare it to SpaceX's Falcon 9 to understand the challenges ULA faced. Although the Vulcan rocket boasts impressive capabilities and advanced technology, it falls short in comparison to SpaceX's Falcon 9 in crucial areas. The Falcon 9 is not only more powerful and versatile, but also significantly cheaper to launch. One of the key advantages of the Falcon 9 is its reusability. In contrast, ULA's Vulcan rockets are not reusable, driving up the cost per launch and making them less competitive in the market. Similarly, NASA had to adapt to the new competitive landscape by partnering with private companies like SpaceX for initiatives such as the Commercial Crew Program. While NASA's rockets, like the Space Launch System, are powerful and capable of carrying heavy payloads, they also suffer from high costs and lack of reusability compared to SpaceX's rockets. Now, you might be wondering why. Despite following the same path, ULA is almost bankrupt and being sold while NASA is still standing. The sole reason why NASA is still standing is your tax money. If it wasn't for the billions of tax money, they would have gone decades ago because of their outdated technologies and lack of innovation. Now, after all the challenges it has been dealing with, ULA doesn't seem to survive this downfall and is left with only one option, which is to sell the company. In the 11 months since it was first reported that ULA was up for sale, the company's potential buyer has become a topic of widespread speculation. In November, reports surfaced indicating that Blue Origin was one of three potential buyers eyeing ULA. By December, the Wall Street Journal confirmed that the competition was narrowing down, with Blue Origin and a large private equity firm emerging as the two most likely bidders. This sparked further anticipation about the future of ULA. Recent activities within ULA have added fuel to the speculation surrounding the imminent sale. A handful of senior officials at ULA have been observed seeking new job opportunities. Moreover, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Blue Origin and owner of Amazon, made significant financial moves that further hinted at his interest in acquiring ULA. 
Bezos sold $2.4 billion worth of Amazon stock, with securities filings revealing his potential plans to sell an additional $8 billion to $9 billion in stock over the next 12 months. These transactions suggest that Bezos is strategically positioning himself to finance the acquisition of ULA. While there are no confirmed values for the sale, speculation within the launch industry points to a potential valuation of ULA ranging between $2 billion to $3 billion. This estimation takes into account various factors such as ULA's assets market position, as well as the advantages that an acquisition by Blue Origin or another buyer could bring. And there are some experts who predict that SpaceX might actually buy the company, instead of Blue Origin, to get rid of the threatening team-up of Blue Origin and ULA. This strategic move would not only eliminate a potential competitor, but also allow SpaceX to further solidify its dominance in the space launch market. However, for now, the reports suggesting that Blue Origin is buying it seem more reliable, as many trusted sources are reporting over it. One of the key questions about the acquisition is what will happen to the CEO of ULA, who has demonstrated the ability to run a launch company with an excellent record of success and is willing to compete with SpaceX. It is unclear what role he would have in an acquisition by Blue Origin. Sources indicate that Bruno has a good relationship with Bezos. Vulcan and Blue Origin's own large rocket, New Glenn, will both compete for government launch contracts and both use the BE-4 rocket engines developed by Blue Origin. ULA has operational launch pads at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida and Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. It has large integration facilities at both locations. Additionally, it has an experienced launch team with a long track record of success, which could be useful to Blue Origin as it seeks to launch the new Glenn rocket later this year. The sale is not official, and nothing has been formally announced. The co-owners of United Launch Alliance, Lockheed Martin and Boeing, have yet to comment publicly on the sale of the company. However, two sources told us that Blue Origin is nearing the purchase of ULA. The sources said they have not personally seen any signed agreements, but they expect the sale to be announced within a month or two. ULA also has expertise in the storage of cryogenic fuels in space. For a time, before its co-owners shut down the program, ULA was developing an innovative upper stage known as Advanced Cryogenic Evolved Stage. This upper stage was intended to be reusable and powered by liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. These are the kinds of technologies that Blue Origin will need as it develops a lunar lander. In other exciting news, Dream Chaser space plane is nearing its launch after years of development. Dream Chaser, which is designed to be reused up to 15 times, is currently undergoing final testing at NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility. The space plane is set to perform its demonstration mission to the International Space Station in 2024. This marks a significant step forward in redefining reusable space transportation. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.